Good morning. How's it going out there, everyone? Welcome back here to a Monday, start of the work week here, August 25th, 2025, 82525. All right, 938 a.m. That's California time here. Latest activity on the earthquake 3D or earthquake map here shows some activity across the uh, northern California area, 2.1 towards the southern end here of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, looks like uh, earlier yesterday we had some activity stirring up there as well. Uh, also some movement down into Southern California. Going to start off first here around the Kamchatka area where a 6.1 earthquake struck early, well, late last night it looks like, just before midnight. I was asleep by then. Right prior to the subduction zone. Uh, of course, the uh, Kuro Kamchatka trenches northern end here is where the 8.8 .8 struck here last July. Decent magnitude. Uh, obviously, it can get up in the nine range across this area. Again, this six pointer occurring just prior to the subduction zone. So I'm wondering here, with all the activity we've seen in the last week, which is quite a bit, we've seen uh, quite a few fives and fours. I'm just wondering if we're starting to maybe talk, have to talk about maybe seeing another larger event out here. I want to show you guys the aftershock sequence here and some of the foreshock activity that stirred up. Uh, from that 8.8 .8 earthquake that happened on the 29th of July this year. That was a big earthquake, uh, the first eight-pointer in four years. Uh, prior to that, we had a 7.4, 10 days prior, right? These were, we had quite a few uh, uh, hundreds, actually, hundreds and hundreds of earthquakes uh, around the 7.4 magnitude. Those were all four shocks, right? Because it was about 10 days later, the 8.8 .8 struck. Since then, if you've noticed, the largest aftershock sequence following the 8.8 .8 is a 6.9. We have yet to see a 7-pointer out here. I know it's close, but on average, an 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake should produce at least one 7-pointer of a decent magnitude and about 10 6-pointers. So these are all new recent events. Uh, there's that 6.8 that stirred up there. That was a few days uh, following the 8.8. Uh, .8. We've had, uh, let's see how many we've actually had following that event. Technically, it would be in August here. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that right? Only six magnitude earthquakes? Six. 6.0 magnitude earthquakes. All these other ones, well, no, we can't really say that because there was a a number of them here let's go back and see real quick what we got you should see about 10 of them uh, regardless uh for this major subduction zone here on average 6.0 and above which i believe uh there def definitely has been it's just a mixed bag of uh four shocks and then of course aftershock activity from that 8.8 .8. but i again it's interesting here to see the 6.1 just prior to the subduction zone um, makes me think that we may still see something larger out here as this is adjusting of course we do have to watch areas down south as well that uh, has not had any major rupture in a, a little while this area obviously has had you know an 8.8 .8 and quite a few other quakes in there but I'm, I'm wondering if we're not done with the release out here just because of the uh, increasing magnitudes as of late in the last couple days. Literally, it's been uh, elevated. Here's the last seven days of 4.5 and above. 45 of them, so it's quite a bit. One six-pointer, of course, that's going to be late, late last night. Quite a few fives in there. Bunch of fours stirred up. Watch this area closely here. I, I don't think we uh, are done yet with some larger activity around that region. It's an observation here, just... When you see these quakes prior to the subduction zone interface, means that uh, this area is still further strained out here. Looks like there was a um, 4.9 a little bit deeper into that subduction zone previous prior to the um, six pointer. And of course, uh, here in the last 24 hours, that 6.1 earthquake last night is going to be the largest here around the planet. After midnight, though. Uh, let's see what we got after midnight. Wow, there's really uh Today's the 25th. 
Have we had any decent magnitudes here? <laughs> I'm starting to look here. Stand by. Um, I actually have to go wait. Now, that can't be right. These are all from... Let's make sure we got this right here. Huh. You're telling me there's been no other fours and whatnot? Let me look here around the globe. I guess not. That's a little odd. Uh, really no four. Well, there's a four-pointer there across the Puerto Rico area and a couple in the middle America Trench. But the USGS here, if you look, this is the last 24 hours, the largest magnitude. Of course, it's going to be late last night. But anything after midnight, look at that. It's abs. Well, there's one right there. Okay, I take that back. That's going to be that 4.4. But still, that's very minimal uh, earthquake activity since midnight. That uh, about 63 miles deep underneath this area. There's a couple different subduction zones here. You got the Mariotas Trough, which it looks like that's into, and then the Puerto Rico Trench up here. Kind of squeezing this area of the Caribbean plate, pushing up on this land. This area can get some big time earthquakes out here. All right, so we'll watch that up there. I still think we could see some possibility of larger movement, more so than what we're seeing right now. Uh, Washington area, handful of earthquakes there. Uh, from yesterday mainly, one today, little two-pointer. Some of these events are adding back on from yesterday. So I do, it doesn't look like they've added any quakes there for the volcanoes though, Mount Rainier, uh, nor the uh, Mount St. Helens area. And we've seen uh, the graphs here. Let me show you guys the trimmer map. And then we'll go over here to the volcano seismicity map here across Mount Rainier. I noted a few earthquakes here yesterday, and it still looks like there's some this morning. I don't believe all of these are ice quakes. There may be a fraction of these that are ice quakes, uh, but I still think that's some earthquake activity out there stirring up. Uh, it doesn't look anything, and I'm going to show you guys again, it doesn't look anything like what we've seen last month here when we had the peak of it, right? Obviously, there was more, but imagine if we've seen something like this today. Oh, those are just ice quakes. How, how can that be when they, they said these were all earthquakes of a swarm so they look you know not as numerous today but they're still identical to the signal that a earthquake would mark here on the seismograph station just not as numerous again i'm gonna give them a little credit here some of these little thin ones may be some ice quakes but there's still earthquake activity stirring up there uh, the reporting has stopped completely i'm guessing because these are maybe too small to locate but there's still uh, a little bit of earthquake activity stirring up. Same for Mount St. Helens here. If we go over and check out up around the summit region, got uh, a handful of earthquakes up here as well. There's an earthquake, a couple earthquakes here, as you can see on the map. This signal right here is a P wave from the 6.1 in the Russia area. Surface waves uh, following that with a wavy pattern. That can uh, ring the earth like a bell for a little bit. That's why those lines are drawn out like that but there's a you see earthquake activity right those those are definitely earthquakes and if you look in the back day the previous day there's a number of further earthquakes out there and um according to the usgs nothing taking place here across mount st helens last earthquake was like three days ago but the graphs I just showed you guys were in the last 24, 36 hours. So maybe they're still going to get to them. A couple earthquakes there they reported from five days ago. But again, we've been looking at these graphs and there's still a number of earthquakes up there. Nothing big, right? There's nothing big happening, but there's still some smaller earthquake activity occurring. Uh, Bay Area, Northern California getting a little active out here across the area. Um, pushing in around the Bay region, it looks like. 2.5 yesterday, a couple other earthquakes in the vicinity of the two-pointer uh, up here around the Concord area, Antioch, and into the Delta. Some smaller quake activity from last night, and one more this morning it looks like. Nothing big going on, but there is some increasing movement around the Bay Area. We do have some faults here that are overdue, such as the Hayward Fault. 1868 was the last 6.9 earthquake. This area is capable of a 7.5. Uh, with the connection up here to the uh, Rogers Creek Fault, that makes it a more likelihood of seeing a larger event. 
and uh, yeah, 1868. A lot of uh, a lot of years has passed there since uh, the big event. That's fairly well primed for some uh, large activity. Southern California, a little spotty, nothing major going on, nothing above 2.5 down there. Again, all earthquakes below the 2.5 threshold. Nothing of unusual notice here uh, that I can see on the map. Up in Yellowstone, that's another area where they've had a, a few earthquakes. It does look like uh, well, they went back and added a couple earthquakes there from yesterday. I knew they would get to that. Awesome. Uh, so let's go see. It looks like a little swarm around the Hebgen Lake area. Check out the Yellowstone graphs here on this Monday see what we have going on so a seismograph station that i found that works properly and can pick up uh the activity is this one right here there's a couple of smaller quakes a couple this morning as well um that reading right here is going to be the 6.1 in russia uh, notice that it did pick it up quite nicely and uh, some uh, actually i believe that's the p wave there so each station can be tuned to pick up different types of motion there in the ground uh, that's why this station's picking up quite a few of the smaller earthquakes around Yellowstone. Here's a bunch from uh, uh, yesterday morning. Uh, but nothing big going on. They did. It does look like they reported some of them out here, so that is good. Uh, oil fields of Texas still rocking and rolling. Nothing major going on uh, out in the eastern portion of the country. Looks like a couple of quakes added to the map that were not here yesterday. One around the New Madrid Seismic Zone, 1.9. And um, a couple out there around the Carolina area. Take a look here at the Earthquake 3D Globe. As far as any newer clustering or activity going on, got uh, the Crunch Zone out here. Fairly active, but that's uh, a common occurrence on any day. New Zealand, uh, another three-pointer down there. Just kind of watching this. This is somewhat of our quiet zone today. Seems like things have really been quiet since that earthquake up here last night, that 6.1. A little too quiet, I would say. Um, South America area got a bunch of earthquake activity down here, but that's common along that major subduction zone. Same for the Middle America Trench. Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Nothing going on out there across the rift boundaries. Take a look here at the space weather activity. Well, welcoming a number of sunspots out here. Is this one... All oh, right, looks like they got it fixed. When you clicked on this last night, it would take you to a, an image from days ago. But this one looks accurate. 16.15 is the UTC time. That would match this time up here just about. So this is our most current imagery of the sunspots. Really not too concerned with this one here. It may blast off a sea flare or two, but the active areas are back over here and also a major one. This is the uh, sunspot back over here that uh, uh, is likely responsible for that large CME eruption here a couple days ago on the far side. A full halo CME that was blasted off. Let me show you guys. I have to go back over here, go down the list a little bit. And, uh, well, can't go back anymore. But uh, there was definitely a far side eruption. More than likely, it could have been an X flare. Um, some were thinking uh, due to that massive explosion that took place there on the far side. Either way, that sunspot region is the culprit. It's still flaring. Uh, and it looks fairly massive in terms of coverage area. We'll have to see what's behind that. But it looks like some further yellow and red indicating magnetic structure complexity. That's what you want there when it comes to producing you know, stronger flares. Also watching this area down here. So we got two massive areas uh, that are complex. This one's massive, but it's really, I mean, I guess there's a little bit of complexity. I don't think we're going to see anything major out of that one, though. You can kind of see here on the bright brightness of the UV image of the sun areas of interest. And that's going to be these regions right here and that major sunspot center disk on the eastern side. Roughly, you know, right around the equator area, center disk of the sun. Uh, that should, once it lines up here, that give us a, a more decent earth shot, earth directed shot, should anything blast off from there. So we'll get uh, we'll get a better look at this here in the coming days. The flare threat has been bumped up. 
Still getting bombarded by protons. 75% chance that is still occurring since yesterday morning or so. Uh, these proton events can continue for a little while. A 6.1 struck right in the middle of this. I always like to look for elevated earthquake activity when we get these proton events. So we'll watch this as it's still occurring uh, throughout the day today for maybe larger earthquake movement. Uh, I do believe there's a relationship between the sun and what goes on on the sun. Uh, the question is what affects the plate tectonics more, whether it's a CME, uh, is it proton events, is it a flare, you know, just a flare itself. Um, so I'm kind of keeping a total tally here of space weather events uh, in relation to uh, elevated earthquake activity here on the planet. So still kicking up there across the uh, northern polar region there mainly as uh, far as protons go. That's not the aurora, but that's the protons slamming into the planet due to... Um, I'm thinking it's due to massive far side eruption because we haven't had anything here earth facing side not yet there's a flare activity here in the last couple days notice that we're sizzling up here with some C and M flare activity uh, the X flare activity is definitely bumped up I have mine at about 15% chance there for an X flare these guys showing five but I think it's going to be more than that uh, M flare should be more elevated than that but this is just what Kevin here has here on his uh, site uh, but with these two massive areas coming in and the way the sunspot is, the uh, solar flare detection chart is sizzling. Well, you know, I think we'll see uh, maybe a shot of some X flare activity. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Um, doo -doo -doo. Take a look here at the next close approach asteroids. Eventually Apophis there is going to hit us. Well, not hit us, but it's going to get close to us. I do like to look at that. And... Um, that's down the road a little bit. Uh, millions of miles away out here for the uh, um, next close approach asteroids. None of these are really all that close. so Not even going to bother with that today. Storm Prediction Center, just general thunderstorm threat out there today. It looks like even around Chico area, Redding as well. Uh, we'll see, see what happens here. I wouldn't mind a thunderstorm or two marginal just a very slight area across southern arizona uh and that looks like maybe for some strong wind gusts from some of these storms but other than that no tornado threat or even hail pretty quiet out there uh here's a numerical model in terms of uh precipitate precipitation coverage there looks like northern california definitely going to get some later this afternoon as uh, far as any hurricanes coming into the Gulf or the uh, eastern portion of the country, I don't see anything coming in for now. Uh, we'll, we'll check back on that, though, as we get a little bit deeper here into the uh, brunt of the hurricane season. Been pretty fortunate out there to not have anything significant coming into either of these areas. Uh, seismograph stations out here. Another earthquake in Russia. Uh, a couple there on the Barrett Station in Southern California. One there in Mount Rainier as well. That's going to be this station. So I'm just going to keep... Uh, I definitely want to keep Russia up there. We'll keep it like that. All right. Uh, we'll watch things here today. See what happens. Like I say, this activity happening back prior to the subduction zone is normally not a good sign. Uh, but we'll see how that plays out. I get that there can be some further, you know, adjustment considering most of this activity was into the subduction zone. So now we're starting to restrain all over again. But I don't know. It's, uh, we'll have to watch that. Uh, now, according to the USGS, that 8.8 .8 earthquake only partially released the strain out here. So we do have, you know, maybe some possibilities of some further large activity out here. I don't know if we'll see up to an 8.8 .8 or not, but we're still missing the 7-pointer. Uh, as far as aftershock activity goes, we've seen that 7.4 10 days prior to the 8.8, .8, but we've got to have a seven, uh, probably a mid-7 or even an upper 7 out here. That may be coming. We'll watch that. Have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at. Uh, we'll catch you guys out here a little bit later on this evening for the uh, Monday night update. Have a good one, folks. Stay safe.